Hey everybody, Mark Spect the Comics, and I'm back. This time I wanted to do a vlog for my channel. It's the first time I've done one of these, so uh, hopefully you enjoy this. I want to talk a little bit about the uh, the current market, you know, the current comic market, what's going on with it, some of the uh, recent prices we've seen on certain key books, and a little bit about my thoughts on it. So uh, if you want to hear a little bit about it, stay tuned. So if you haven't already, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And like I mentioned before, we're going to be talking about the comic market prices. So um, we've all been seeing the crazy prices for multiple books in the past year or so. Some key issues seem to have doubled in price between early last year up until now. And... Um, Prices burst upward so fast that unless you belong to any of these, you know, websites like Go Collect, GPA, you know, CLZ, whatever the case may be, that gives you, um, that tracks all the prices for you, along with obviously, you know, tracking the major auction houses like Comic Link, Comic Connect, Heritage, so forth, you may miss another record price on a book that you're looking for. So uh, just for an example, the most recent run-ups of uh, Hulk 181, Giant Size X-Men, X-Men 1, Amazing Spider-Man 129, and so forth. I've noticed you know, some interesting behaviors in, uh, in the marketplace, so I figured I'd, pull, you know, I'd bring these up to you guys. So um, after the uh, most recent auction ended at Comic Link, this was like end of February, I've noticed that some of the prices have just gone absolutely crazy. Major increases, 20, 30 percent increases in specific grades, which you know you notice some of these books are already quite expensive to begin with. So uh, what I've noticed is, in particular, on eBay, where a specific price on a book that ended on Comic Link, say if you know, a giant size X-Men at an 8.0 sold for, I don't know, 10 grand. I noticed that that same grade on eBay that was listed for 7 was immediately pulled and relisted at a higher price. Um, so basically, so these prices were rising so rapidly that it may also lead a seller to think the book is better in his possession or her possession for a few more years. Regardless, you may have some supply being taken out of the market, and then you may have high-priced supply being added. Without other checks, and I'm talking about stimulus checks now, because this is an, an external factor leading to increased prices as well, this could simply lead to a never-ending process of rising prices. Yet, isn't that pretty much what we're all used to anyways, just continuously rising prices. You know, sure, there's obviously some ebbs and flows and everything, but have our key issues, and specifically in Bronze Age and older, ever really gone down in price? You know, so it's, it's not really like the rise in price that's shocking us so much. It's more about the short time frame that the prices have increased, you know? You normally tend to ex, you know, see rapid price increases in modern age. You don't typically tend to see this in, you know, copper, bronze, silver, and older. So um, that's what's been, I think, more surprising to to collectors in this past year than anything else. Um, the other thing I notice is on eBay is the number of watchers people watching certain you know key issues it seems the higher the price on the eBay listing the more watchers um, you know people want to see what's what's going on like what's gonna happen to that book they even post pictures of uh, outrageous prices and I've noticed this on uh, <laughs> on many social uh, media platforms um, especially on uh, Instagram and uh, Facebook you know advertising the listings and like 
you know, people saying, oh, look at this. This is crazy. You know, let's watch and see what this book goes for. For the uh, subset of watches that are potential buyers, it's a lot of sidelining where the, um, where if, if the high price is even met, you know, and then if, if it is, then obviously that potential buyer gets left behind the wayside, hoping for that next book to come up. And that's including myself too, because one of my, uh, one of my grail books is Werewolf by Night 32. And I couldn't tell you in the last two years, the struggle that it has been for myself to pick up that book, especially with the amount of spec that's involved in that book. So I'm one of those, you know, potential buyers waiting on the sideline to get that book and hopefully waiting that, that that book doesn't get that immediate surge in prices that some of these other books are getting. So, uh, yeah, that's been, that's been a bit stressful for me as well. And, um, so I don't think this watching, you know, process helps buyers because higher listing prices in a fast moving market do not drop easily. In fact, it's more likely other listings will ask a similar price as well because the seller wants to get as much money as possible, you know, for that book. Obviously, they've been holding it for a while, looking to optimize the most amount of profit possible. So uh, even when a particular grade doesn't sell at a specific price, another grade probably does sell at a price that supports the other grades and prices. So you've been seeing that quite a bit as well. It's, you know, an impossible wish that all sales and all grades for all outrageous prices will stop. But, you know, I've noticed that it's not been every single grade for every single uh, key issue that's been going up in prices. But it has been a vast majority of the grades that are being, you know, seen uh, sold for record prices. So, you know, this, uh, this watcher effect you know, similar to people grouped around celebrities and just, you know, <laughs> going all googly eyed. It's pretty funny. So uh, they want to be in it. And um, that's what this whole watching thing is all about. If you're a buyer, you want in. And if you're a seller, you're loving the upward price movements, of course. So uh, the whole watching, you know, of a key book feeds itself. For buyers, obviously, rising prices is like uh, blood in the water. Buyers don't like to be left behind, and getting a key or a grail is a major goal in collecting. If you're an investor, you want the item that's growing in value. Plain and simple, right? So for the seller, they are not limited by value as they own the book and can therefore ask whatever they want for it. If it sells, then that's great. However, if the seller truly wants or needs to sell the book, then the price must meet the you know the fair market value you know so um but as we saw by my previous examples many sellers pull their books off the market or then push the prices even higher and we've been and like i said previously we've been seeing this consistently on ebay the other thing that happens is simply the more you lose at an auction meaning when you get outbid the fewer choices you have so if you can't get that 9.4 that, you know, say you had in the budget for like $1,500, well then guess what? You, along with potentially the 20 other watchers, start bidding up the 9.2s and also pull up the 9.0s and etc. So we see this happening as well and that's why you're getting these subsequent grades for many books going up and hitting record prices. So... Uh, Many of us have heard the phrase perception is reality, obviously, you know, basically meaning whatever you're seeing, hearing, experiencing, real or not, is your perception of the subject and therefore is your reality, personal or actual, at least partially in it, you know. So while many of us can sit by and watch prices rise without it necessarily causing us to take action, for those of us who either want the book or own a book with a price movements, a posted listing price does have a psychological effect. And the more outrageous the listing price or sale, the more we seem interested. Everybody is the class example. Everybody rubbernecks at a car accident, don't they? You know, 
similar principle in the in the comic market. So uh, why is this happening right now? Is it because it's you know the stimulus checks? Is it because of just sheer boredom? We're at home. We have nothing else to do because of the you know the restrictions. We're not going out spending as much. We're not going on vacations. Is it shill bidding? You know what it what exactly is causing this? You know these have all obviously been discussed in many many you know posts, videos, blogs, whatever the case may be, and um, most of the time the answers are several and a combination and just you know one of maybe two drivers. So while timing certainly has a hand in this. So does the maturing of the comic book collecting genre. When I say uh, maturing, I mean everything from widespread availability and liquidity, you know, the auctions, eBay, the third party grading like CGC, CBCS, that speeds up the transactions, you know, the mechanisms that go into obviously tracking prices and reporting them. You know, obviously, go collect GPA, your YouTube channels, your, you know, your comic book, you know, your CB, CBSIs, your uh, comic toms, all these, you know, channels that report prices, your top hot 10 books, whatever. All this feeds into the madness, you know. So it's not unlike the stock market being at least partially driven with new interest money coming in from Robinhood, you know, and other zero charging apps on your phone trading platform. So too are collectibles being somewhat partially supported now by buying groups like um, like Otis and Rally. So any of those, and for those of us that can you know afford a high grade key without you know a joint investment platform. The, uh, the organization in the comic collecting genre has given us a level of comfort as well. This is basically the perfect storm for maturing. Sophistication, but not a storm that has to end. It may just well be the beginning. The comic collecting genre continues to grow. Can you imagine if GPA or Go Collect can actually post daily bids and asking prices for a particular book slash grade? and liquidity as almost as fast as buying and selling stocks. Just think about that for a second. You know, eBay and places like Comic Link already list the supply of sellers, but what if the buyer prices are listed as well? You know, just like I said, think about that. Did any of you think that the market would be what it is today? If you were, you know, flipping through say like the Overstreet guideline so when I mentioned that the shocking prices, you know, like I mentioned earlier, are we less shocked by the new prices as much as are we shocked by how rapidly the prices change? This change, this shortening of the price inflation slash value cycle is clearly a result of the maturing market mechanisms I mentioned. Operating within the comic genre, price tracking, availability, liquidity, third-party standardized grading, and so forth. These factors are only now beginning to take hold. So, the synergy of standard grading, encapsulization, availability, liquidity, price performance data, coupled with new interest, investor involvement, investment companies getting more involved, is what's feeding this new norm we're in today. But, um... You know, but not to get you all like, you know, fear of what's going on. The um, the prices and the rate at which they increase. This is just for those of us that are involved and in the, and in the know. Try telling people who don't even have a clue on a prior interest that you made more money on comic books than you do in your own, you know, stock market portfolio, your 403, retirements, etc. Or that you can buy a house by selling your collection. The news getting out simply brings more people in. Whether you want to believe it or not. 
Another aspect of today's market dynamics is the key issue collector. And I fall into this myself. I do buy a lot of, you know, keys for my collection for potentially down the road as investments to sell later. We've all seen, the, you know, the posts of investors slash collectors with many multiples of a particular key book. I see this all the time on Facebook. It is one particular um, person that posts. He has like 25 to 30 copies of Ultimate Fallout 4 graded and raw and some of those 1 in 25s. And people bash him all the time even though the price of the book keeps on going up. But he's the only one that's laughing to the bank at the end of the day. So uh, since um, everyone generally jumps on the price bandwagon as I mentioned previously with a new record price and then some a record price purchase basically breaks you even on that purchase at the minimum unless prices keep on going up in which case you also make a profit on the new purchase <clears throat> sorry about that but more importantly if you had already had multiple copies of the key issue then your record setting price just marked up your existing issue stock as well this phenomenon may be hard to stop as it pertains to certain heavily collected key issues. Like I said, Ultimate Fallout 4. These key issue collections can particularly have a heavy effect on the market on that issue and grade grouping. So this may already be occurring. And the perfect example is that book. So... Um, the simple mechanics of the supply and demand from hoarding key issues will just drive the market higher. Let's not forget about perception as reality like I previously stated. We never care too much about the average sale prices. We only care about the record prices that become the minimum price every seller now wants and the price that every buyer is alerted to. Not to mention that the auction houses that set the record wants to advertise that price as well. So we've all read these posts regarding the bubble bursting. We're all saying, no, it's, it's not a matter of when, but it's going to happen. But um, the arguments between the modern, you know, the modern age books and the older books, the coppers, the bronzes, the silvers and so forth. You know, at least as it pertains to older books, I don't think you're going to get that bubble bursting. It's not going to happen. It just doesn't happen. These older books don't have the um, the crazy you know ebbs and flows that the modern age books do you know so vice vice versa the same thing is you don't get the crazy price increases in in those older books like you do with the modern books because those books already have a platform base of prices they're not going to be that one dollar book that becomes a hundred dollar book that book already has an established price so obviously it's pretty fast right now supply and demand is an even stronger mechanism as it pertains to newer books rising prices make people go looking in their you know back issue bins for um those those decent grades and then sell them the older books obviously are less likely to have in raw form and um are going to be less exposed to those crazy prices so i guess what i'm saying is when does a run up in prices end? Um, that's the question everybody wants to know. That means, you know, the slowdown for old books and in modern books could mean just downward adjustments. Well, like, or like an outright correction. I think it ends for different books and different collecting eras, you know, modern, bronze, silver, gold, in different grades at all different times. You see this time and time again. You know, books run up before and then people just need the dust to settle a bit before the next run up this is what i said ebbs and flows investors always want their you know always want to make their money so if a book had a big run up that may not you know be the fastest money making investment like for example hulk 181 giant size x-men for those for the longest time those books were stagnant they weren't increasing as rapidly as they are now you know, versus books that have not yet run up, like X-Men 94, you know, 
X-Men 101, 102, so forth. You know, again, Hulk 181, Giant Says X-Men number one, is always going to go up. Those books will not be affected by a bubble burst because those are massive, massive key books. It's it's more about those lesser keys that will have the big effect if the bubble does burst. So if an investor can make more money faster on, say, X-Men 94, because Hulk 181 and Giant Size X-Men have gone up so fast in price that there's less margin to get a profit on, then the investor will go towards the X-Men 94 because that's where going to be the newest fast price increase. Doesn't mean that Hulk 181 or Giant Size X-Men 1 is dead in the water. <laughs> that's not the case. It, it's just already hit a really high price that they're not going to be able to double their investment like in six months or a year, whereas they probably could with that X-Men 94. So an investor is always going to want to look to buy and sell books accordingly, just like in the stock market, for the fastest and the largest return. That's always going to be the investor's outlook. A collector, obviously, will see this quite differently. Rising prices can make a collector desperate to get one before the price gets out of reach. Like I mentioned previously, Werewolf by Night 32, I was looking to spend a specific price for a specific grade. But obviously, that book is a major key and a grail for many people. And... With the spec involved, the prices are only going to continue to go up. So I'm going to be obviously looking to get a lower grade than what I was looking to initially. Unless, of course, I sell some key books to get up to a more desirable grade. So the problem with the rising market is that it's not the time to find the deal. It's just, you know, it's not just the price. It's all about the availability. I'll use, this is going to be a ridiculous example, but just to illustrate the point. Action Comics 1, Detective 27, Marvel Comics 1, Superman 1. These are all like holy grail books, right? Books that don't come up for auction often, very limited supply, and when they do, they come up with some crazy prices, you know. So, like I said, when they do come up, you're going to have to pay a premium for them just for the opportunity to get one. The seller is in control with that book, obviously, because they can ask whatever they want and they'll likely get it. So, while a few books behave like those Holy Grail books I just mentioned, when you go through a rising market like we are experiencing today, there are many transactions, but be sure that some of these new owners of our silver bronze age books may put them away for 10 plus years you know even in the investment houses they're looking for like a target of five years at a time so when you add in the relatively small numbers of really high grade books across specific genres in collecting eras they're only going to become more popular by the minute. Sometimes that rising market is your best opportunity and also a fleeing one to even get the book you want and the grade you want. So make no mistake, while the rarity of those golden age grails are what they are, it does display what it's likely to come for some of our big silver age and bronze age key books. You know, eventually not so commonly listed for sale and not simple to find available for purchase whenever we want. Like any market, the prices do eventually stabilize. There's not just going to be an endless amount of increasingly new record prices. They do have to plateau at some point. It's obviously going to depend on supply and demand. You know, in the comic genre, when investors decide they can make more money in an undervalued origin issue or first appearance like for example what I like to collect a lot of is villains versus an already super you know sky high first superhero appearance when collectors simply want 
or you know 20 minor keys versus the price of one older key that's dependent on them or when modern books you know go to six or seven dollars when there are just like too many you know 9.8s out there being purchased of a new key book these are all just like many examples um, we recently saw some of that phenomenon with uh, Giant Size X-Men 1. You know, we discovered that it was too undervalued for the longest time. You could have you could have bought a really high grade, you know, GSX-1 for a few grand just not too long ago. So that's what I'm saying. These big key books for a while were undervalued and many investors noticed this. And it's just now it's starting to hit its record prices, you know with that book so now you're starting to see that with subsequent books like X-Men 94 that's going to become the next big investable book for almost the last 40 years giant size X-Men 1 and, and X-Men 94 were just about the same price you could look at previous price guides to compare and then you know same thing with other books in, including Hulk 180 at this rate, one of the best investments for price appreciation you can make is probably the second, you know, appearance or origin issue. Historically, an origin was crazy valuable as well. Some argue just as valuable as the first appearance for certain key books. Then obviously there's the reality concept. Kept within the confines of the comic collecting genre, did any of you ever think that up until recently a Hulk 181 would sell for fifty sixty thousand dollars twenty years ago no of course not and uh... since we all readily accept that reality today then why would an additional hundred twenty or two hundred forty thousand make any additional difference the reality is whatever the price is we all accept you know xyz for these crazy prices on other types of assets like houses, you know, antique cars, whatever the case may be. So why can't we accept the reality for a certain key book selling for X amount of dollars, like Ultimate Fallout 4? I remember when that book was selling for $400 for a 9.8. That was just two years ago. And now it's selling for $3,500. You know how many people in that two year span was saying, waiting for that book to crash? You just got to accept the reality for the book for what it is. So, um, let's see. I know this has been going on for a little bit, so I want to thank everyone for still listening in on this. But uh, let's, let's, you know, let's wrap this up. So, the psychology of the rising prices causes certain behaviors in us. It's no different than the stock market in many ways. Anyone see GameStop's run up recently? <laughs> You know, financial reality had no hand in the value of that stock. Initially, it was supply versus demand, and then it just became a perception is reality. Why not pay a hundred dollars a share? Why not one fifty? Why not two fifty? And so forth. The simplicity was: if it's going up, it's going up, and there's nothing you can do about it. It's worth what it's worth when you can buy it and sell it for that you know value when you can. It's a herd mentality, isn't it? Everything gets justified if enough people are doing it. That may be the new reality for key issues in the comic book industry. Prices are going to keep on going up fast and slow. Where you enter and exit and on which book will simply just be your personal part of creating and justifying the perception and supporting the ongoing process. So uh, that's that. Hopefully you guys enjoy that. If you did, feel free to hit the thumbs up. Comment down below on what your thoughts are on the uh, current market for comics. And until next time, this is Mark Spectre Comics. Out.